and get up and find a place that God has custom designed for you to fit. The delay has always been he needs a corporate body that will manifest him. Not somebody, not one body or anybody. He needs a corporate body to manifest himself. So take your individual expression and amplify it in the local body called the church. The bottom line is this, God's, the bottom line is this, the church with God's idea, not man. It's not a choice, it's his divine plan. Yes. Every move of God that transforms the earth is, it is in the midst of a corporate people in the earth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the church must move forward upon the inspiration of the revealed word of God. Mm -hmm. We must comply and bring the house back into the complicity of the scriptures. So we must come in alignment mm -hmm. with what the word is in its entirety. <clears throat> and all the members must be <clears throat> centered on let me write it. And all the members will be centered upon the, the accurate consecration of yielding up your individuality for the whole. Because we are individually and collectively his body. Anything less than that, we lie to ourselves when we say we have a personal destiny. You don't have one. Why? Because we're connected to God and each other. Which collectively... Yeah, that's a good point. Which collectively brings forth the fullness of his life on earth as it is in heaven. The divine fusion of God in each of us and through each of us gives us experience in the collective and connective power of God. Yeah, that's a lot to say. Let me close this part, this section, and say we will never find spiritual enlargement as an isolated, separate individual. I promise you. Trust me, you will not. I'm going to say it again. We would never find spiritual enlargement as an isolated, separate individual. But in relationship with others, we can witness the expansion of the unseen power of God manifest brilliantly on the scene. That's why we connect. Give us an opportunity to see God at work in somebody else. Amen. Amen. We don't connect to have parties. We don't connect to have uh, to take trips, we don't connect just so we can have trinkets and donuts and yes. to go out and have eatings and, and you know have those special engagements. Now we connect because we wanted to get a dose of what God is doing in somebody else. Yes. Yes. So we get together as a testimony that God is faithful. Yes. Mm -hmm. One last time you thought that way. I don't connect. I, look, I don't connect to everything. Right. If I'm going to connect to you, if I'm going to spend time and talk to you over the phone, we're going to sharpen iron. Yes. There's something in you that I value. Other than that, I don't, I don't waste a lot of time. Neither should you. All right? Amen. So you got to use your energy. Be real meticulous in your time. Yes. And redeem, that's how you redeem it. You know how you redeem it? You buy it back. I mean, like you buy it back, you, you have to manage it. Yeah. So you don't waste it foolishly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nothing worse than getting tied to something and find out it wasn't worth it. Amen. Galatians 6 and 1. We live life too blindly. We live, we do. We do we're not calculated at all. We just like, pfft. and whatever it throws to us, we accept it. That's status quo. That's what status quo is. We have not been called to just have status quo, just to exist. We've been called to live. So there's another quality of living. Right? So, yeah, Galatians 6 and 1. 6 and 1. Yeah, 6 and 1, 6 and 1, 6 and 1. Now let's look at this. Because after we have the same mind, same judgment, the same thing, we've unified, we've collectively pulled all our resources, we've depended on one another, we know we're our brother's keeper, but then there's some other things that's connected to that unification. Because even in the midst of all those good things and the characteristics and the stuff I shared before and out of all the other corporate church stuff I've <laughs> talked about and, and the domestic things, that's what I call it. There are some other activities that have to transpire because when you come into a relationship with people, things don't necessarily be uh, peaches and cream. You have issues. You have, gro you have growing pains. You have tribulations. 
You have stretch marks by the Spirit of God because all of us are being defined by His hand. Am I right? Yes. Uh, how many know all of us on the Potter's wheel? Yes. 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 Mm, nobody going in the dark, nobody walking through walls, they ain't seen nobody. Unless it's at your home private time, but we all have issues. And I know people say, we all have issues. That's a whole other message. Because you know, that's a scapegoat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People have found a safe place in their walk, and therefore they can say, well, I ain't as bad as them. <laughs> ain't nobody perfect. You ever been around people that's all they said? And yeah, but one perfect, right. And so that, <laughs> what would happen, it takes all your zeal, your passion, your desire, your drive, it's the dream stealer. Because the bar is not raised. Pastor can't be that good. Oh, yeah, I am. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm healthy. I ain't perfect. When I say that, I, I try to live the word the best way. Uh, the Holy Spirit to get me. My conscience is not the Holy Spirit convicting us of sin. It's your conscience. Yes, yes. If you build the pattern in your mind, if you meditate upon the word, it's going to affect your conscience. Oh, yeah, yeah. The lack of word, the lack of submission to the word, then you won't have one. That's why we can get into stuff. Because the enemy knows he takes your conscience, he got you. There's no checks and balance then. And that's what sin does. It taints your conscience. It stains it, makes it callous, makes it insensitive. Mm -hmm. That's the single most reason why I try to live holy. Because mm -hmm. yes. <coughs> once they get in their conscious, you got the you got the subconscious too. That thing sinks deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I thank God though we're sin about grace. Grace. Yeah. Much more about. It. Okay, let's look at this gracious person. Okay, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, if a man be in a situation, we stopped here last uh, week for last, you, which are spiritual, don't put him on blast. Don't slick diss him on Facebook. Amen. Don't tabloid him. Don't talk condescending. See, most of y'all probably think I'm a gossiper. I'm not. Because I know some laws. Yeah. 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 I know that this is the big law that I keep in mind. Now, I have conversation with leadership, so I'm not going to say mm -hmm. that I don't talk. But I'm not, I'm not, it's one thing to have a conversation, it's a whole other thing to have slander. Right. Yes. 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 So I'm not slanderous. Sure. Yeah. Which means I don't spend all my time on your bad things. Go here. Because that's what it says. It says, if, if, if a man be overtaken the fall, you that are spiritual, restore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you're closer to God. What you're willing to restore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. Now, now, everybody, see, the only thing when conflict resolution comes, let me just pan this out for you to help you out, because I have intent on, there's nobody that I ever had corrected in this church that had a sense of that they were uh, incorrigible. Which means basically no help. It's just a done deal. It's over. There's, no, there's nothing I've ever done as it relates to correction and discipline that I anticipated that this person is just gone. Because I'm not God. And God knows the heart. I don't do the heart. I don't think I can judge his fruit. It's God deal with roots. I deal with fruit. That's what all y'all should do. Most of us trying to be going to the root. No, <laughs> you know, we digging around trying to figure out why you like that? Why you do that? Why? No, deal with the fruit, man. Trust God with the roots. Let God in prayer. Take them. That's how you can get into the root. You take it to prayer. And God, okay, you just isn't going to get into this thing. So it said, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. In other words, it's the boomerang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The boomerang. Yeah. However, you judge will be what you reap. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. 
You want a peaceful life? Stop fault fighting. Stop being judgmental. Stop being critical. Stop being cynical. Am I right? <laughs> I know I'm preaching up in this Baptist church. <laughs> but it says, lest you be tempted. Then it says, bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the love of Christ. So if I'm willing to mourn with them that mourn and rejoice with them that rejoice. Amen. Yeah. If I'm willing to be a true priest. Because that's what priests did. The priesthood was based on the, 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 the frailty, the infirmity, and the weakness of the people. Yeah. They couldn't approach God. Right. Right. And I know we got uh, priesthood in Catholicism and some uh, Episcopalian churches still have priests in it. And, you know, but we're all priests. Yes. You get what I'm saying? But if you are only carrying your issues, you're not spiritual. <laughs> Bear ye one another's burden, and so you should fulfill the law of Christ. You want to fulfill the law of Christ? Now, this is not gossipy. You're not on the telephone. <laughs> You're not running around like an uh, inspector gadget trying to get on the dirt to the church. <laughs> You're saying, I see them stuck. Mm -hmm. And I have this passionate plea to see them free. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. I want them to be free. Now, in the midst of wanting them to be free, there are some other factors that has to happen that I won't talk about tonight. Because sometimes we want to go up to people and tell them, what's wrong with you? Yeah. No, you don't do that. You go love them. Yes. Lest you got to consider yourself. Lest mm -hmm. you be tempted. 